Hi everyone, Bernard here on behalf of MovieGameNostalgia.com. Hope you're all keeping well and safe as much as you can. Uh, please, if you're new to these little vlogs and review specials, etc., please push the all subscribe button. That'd be great. Push the bell notifications. Please, thumbs up. It's always nice. It's always nice to be appreciated. So it just takes you a split second while you're watching this just to do a, a quick thumbs up. <clears throat> well, we're going to look at a new TV series today. It's uh, Although I have lots on the internet, and some people are claiming this is a BBC drama. I can actually actually tell you this is an ITV drama. It's on ITV Hub. It's been on ITV for a few nights now. I'm recording this on the 7th of April 2020. So it's just finished its little run on ITV. Six six weeks, six episodes, six hour long episodes. Set the adverts out, what, 44 minutes each, something like that. So yes, I can confirm it's ITV, although I have seen on certain sites, including Internet Movie Database, that it's a BBC showing. But no, I, I think I'm fairly sure that it's ITV because I've literally just finished watching the last one now. And there were definitely adverts, so it wasn't it wasn't the BBC. Anyway, this is a little review and a quick look at like, quick look at this. I mean, I'll tell you a little bit about it anyway. I mean, obviously, this is series two. Uh, we did have a series one, didn't we? I mean, this is a, a crime drama thriller, uh, six episodes. It stars Joanne Froggart, Downton Abbey, anybody, uh, Eoan Grufford, Zoe Tapper, and back for, new for the second series, because obviously those actors there were in the first one as well. New for the second series, we've got Amy Nuttall, it doesn't have a major part in it, to be honest with you. But we do have Catherine Kelly, ex of Coronation Street, Becky of Coronation Street, if you remember that. And obviously one of my... I've got a little soft spot for Catherine Kelly, although she's not the greatest uh, greatest actress, but more, more on that later on. Uh, the first series concluded on the 16th of October 2017, and it was announced that the programme will be returning for a second series, but obviously it's now 2020, so it did take a little while. Uh, it did premiere, the first episode premiered on the 2nd of March 2020, and it's a whodunit storyline, this one, where it involves, obviously, the cliffhanger from the first season series finale and goes from there. So what's it about? Well, if you've, it's a thing that if you've not watched the first, please, you're going to have to go back and watch and find and somehow where to watch series one. You can't you can watch this without watching series one, but it totally ruins any any elements of it. Because although there are flashbacks in this, there's certain things you need to know by watching season one. So please, if you're not watched season or series one, we're, we're in Britain, aren't we? Series one. Please go back and check it out before you watch series two. It'd be a shame if you don't. You'll lose. You will lose things, even though, as I've just said, there are flashbacks. But obviously, you got to lose stuff. So please try and find out. Anyway, series. Try and find out where that's on and watch that before you watch series two. What's it about? Well, well, this starts three week three weeks after an arrest arrest warrant was issued for him. The sexual assault of sixteen women, Andrew Earlham's decomposing body is found in the Kent Marshes. So I'm not giving anything away there. That's one of the first scenes. His throat slit. It's declared he was murdered sometime in the last three days. We pick up series two as the news ripples through the seaside community as one of Andrew's more recent victims, Laura Nielsen, is trying to move on from her ordeal. So when she learns of Andrew's death, she can, not, can't help but feel relieved. The last three weeks spent with him out there and missing have not been very easy. As the investigation into the murder quickly gains momentum, bringing new characters to the foreground who could hold the answers to Andrew's grisly demise, Laura finds herself once again drawn into Andrew's destructive path and must fight to be delayed. Any good? Well, it's interesting. I mean, see, Series 1 had an overall rating of 7.1 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes didn't like it so much. They only give it an overall rating of 54%, which isn't great. And looking through Internet Movie Database now, looking at the individual episodes, there's been six episodes. Obviously, Episode 6 has only, has only shown last night, so there's not many sort of, not much feedback on that one, but we do have a, we do have a rating. Uh, ep in Series 2, Episode 1 got 7.3 out of 10. Episode 2 got 6.5 out of 10. Episode 3 got 7.1 out of 10. Episode 4 got 6.2. Episode 5 got 6.3. And last night, so as I'm doing this, episode 6 only got 5.5. So not really very good. I'll be honest with you, looking at those ratings, I, I thought episodes 3, 4 and 5 were, were probably the best three. I thought episodes 1 and 2 were just a little bit slow going as it set the scene really for this, uh, for this second lot. And Rotten Tomatoes, Again, as a total, as a total thing, and only coming up with a thirty-eight percent rating for this series too. So, it doesn't look overly great. So, I've I've written down here what I what I thought of it. I mean, I'll just quote from what I've 
put down for the MGM review, the movie game nostalgia review. Uh, there's a slowish start to this second series, as you'd expect, as episodes one and two build slowly. Lots of flashbacks helping us remember characters and events, because obviously this is over two years ago now, even though it doesn't time flies, it doesn't still it doesn't seem that long to me. Uh, so there's lots of flashbacks from over to, you know, adding to our overall knowledge. Lots of strong female characters as well. It's very female character led this one. Uh, and it was obviously these these characters will be the backbone of this full series. And they're all introduced in, in perhaps episode one, basically goes through all the new any new characters, plus the old characters that reprise in the, role, the roles from series one. Uh, the acting's OK. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the acting. It's a pretty strong cast. I mean... Obviously, if you think of the uh, the lead, Laura, is Joanne Froggart from obviously more famous for Downton Abbey. She does a really good job, actually, of leading it. And um, I can't complain about the cast. Ironically, one of the, one of the probably weaker ones, I think I mentioned it before, was probably Catherine Kelly, who obviously Becky from Coronation Street many years ago. When when I did watch Coronation Street, I don't I don't anymore. I've, I've felt like, I've got a bit bored with it to be honest with you after about forty years. But there you go. Um, yeah, Catherine Kelly plays Di Renton in this second series. She's not the greatest actor, and she obviously, but she get, she'll get away with it because I do like I do like her back back from Coronation Street Day. So I will let her off a little bit. And her character's a bit of a pain, to be honest with you. She's very annoying, although she does she does by the last episode mellow just a little bit. And she uh, she doesn't chain smoke. She chains eating, uh, nic you know, nicotine gum. So she does that, which is quite, it's quite a nice little touch, really, because I've known people who do that sort of just, they go, they go from cigarettes to, to chain, chain eating uh, nicotine gum for months and months and years and years, which... Probably is just as bad for you, I'm not too sure. Anyway, I was a little worried because yeah, because episodes one and two of the second series, they were they, they threw a lot of characters in and there seemed to be a lot of characters thrown into, into the mix. And I got a bit worried that there'd be too many to try and concentrate on. But fortunately, it sort of narrows it down to just really a handful. And you do get to know them quite well. And the flashbacks, again, are not too confusing. You sort of more or less know when there is a flashback. So it... it can be confusing if, if, if you're distracted if you're not watching if you're not watching it properly and you go on your phone and you look up you might have gone back in time and you've not realized so just it is this thing you'd perhaps have to concentrate on and make sure make sure you watch it and not be doing too many other things as well um the flashbacks did add to this six episode series i must admit but as, as with most drama i think six episodes again was a little bit long i think it probably would have been far better with certainly one less, perhaps two less. I mean, if it had been four episodes, I think it might have been better. If you're watching weekly, um, it, it wasn't that bad. It didn't get boring. But if you binge watch it, if you're going to binge watch this one after another, there are little elements you think that could have dragged on just a little bit. So if you're binge watching, yeah, it's, it could have been, it would have been a lot tighter and better just for all right, five episodes, but definitely four episodes. It would have been a lot by a lot, lot tighter and neater to watch. So, but obviously, if you if you're watching it one one every every night for a few nights or one a week like the original, then yeah, it probably just holds your interest uh, while it's going through. The ending, well, the ending last night. I watched the ending, and um, this is always the most important thing with these dramas, and it could could actually a drama could fall by it. I think these five point five ratings are based on the ending. To be honest, it's okay. There's a, some good twists there that are offering a lot, but it, it sort of turns into a little bit of a damp squib again. But it does end. I mean, there is an end to it. You do get a, a finality with it, but obviously there's a couple of things unanswered, but not nothing too strenuous. And a, a question you ask is, you know. You wouldn't have had a TV. There's one obvious question you ask, and I won't say it here because it ruined the thing. But it, obviously, on episode one, you probably would have thought, "Well, if such and such a person had done such and such a thing, it would have all been sorted." But then again, you wouldn't. We wouldn't have had a six-episode season. So, I'll leave. It's okay. It's not a bad ending, and it's just an okay finish. No, nothing fantastic. So, overall, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you know my my reviews, I get a watchable rating is six out of ten. I'm not going to give it less than a six out of ten because it is watchable, but it's not it's not the greatest, but it, it is good as it's well acted. If you like a good British drama, and it's only six episodes, could have been four. Yeah, I'd recommend I'd recommend you watch it. You, you please let me know what you think if you get to watch um, Liars series two, and please, as I said, seek out series one first. Don't don't be watching this uh, series two. But yeah, overall. Yeah, 
it's all right. It's six hours. I won't get back, as people say. Don't they don't like? But I didn't. I didn't dislike it. it. Was it was okay? Some good actors, some good female talent, acting talent as well in it, which which was nice and good to watch. And uh, I'm sure over the pond in America, I've got I know I've got some people over there who listening on these reviews as well. I think you think you'll enjoy it for the quirkiness. Obviously, these British crime dramas are. I think they travel quite well, don't they? Because they're a little bit different to what you get over in the USA. So Liar series two. Yep, and I think it's also out to buy, and uh, very soon it will be out to buy. Just check there. It's on the ITV Hub Now series two, and it's out to buy on May the 4th, 2020, 14 99 on DVD and 16 99 on Blu-ray. If you want to wait till then and then binge watch it all in one go, I'll leave that to you. Anyway, please let me know in the comments what you think if you get to watch Lion or if you've watched it already, you'll let me know what you thought and whether you agree or disagree that it's an okay watch. It's a watchable watch, but nothing fantastic, but not but not a bad, not a bad waste of time, not a bad waste of six hours. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please follow me on Twitter for all the latest uh, movie news, TV drama news, etc. at nostalgia underscore movie. And also on Facebook and at Burns and Amy links to movie game nostalgia.com, my little website for old and rare DVDs, posters from the 90s and 2000s, and some retro board games, some of the older board games rather than the new ones, some of the older from the 60s, 70s, 80s, etc., etc. So if you come have a look on my website, moviegainnostalgia.com, that's absolutely fantastic. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope you can join me again very soon for something else. As always, look after yourselves. Have a great night, whatever you're doing, or a great day, whatever you're doing. Please look after yourself, look after your friends, look after your family, and just, uh, you know, Keep a little, keep a little watch out for other people. So if you're not seeing someone around for a while, just, just you know, don't go no knocking on the door. We're social distancing, aren't we? Which is the new thing now. But uh, yeah, just keep your eye out for people, and we'll, uh, we'll all get through this one way or another. Anyway, this is Bernard saying thanks for watching. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye.